Next will be approval of change to McPhee Park Court Rental Regulations and Hours. All right. Um, McPhee Park, the f uh, Phase 3, now has four lighted tennis courts that are con can be converted to eight pickleball courts and a full-size basketball court. The installation of the basketball port court lighting actually finished yesterday, um, so we are a little bit ahead of the schedule. Um, the uh, Parks and Athletics Council voted unanimously to recommend the following changes to the rental regulations, hour of use, and fee schedule for the McPhee Park Courts. Currently, the courts are available to reserve, and this is the tennis and pickleball courts, um, during the field allocation process. So twice a year, we have fields and courts that go through quite a process to be divided, divided among many, many groups. I think 30 some in the last year or so. Um, tennis was added to that list, the last two field allocations. Um, and we had a discussion about this at the meeting and the, the um, Parks and Athletics Council would like to keep or say that the courts could be available um, to reserve during this process in January and June by schools located in the town of Farragut only and no later than 6.30 p.m. each day. Right now we have some rentals that go to 6 or 6.30 uh, from a school. So, and this, so this would limit any other group coming in and getting courts um, for field, during the field allocation process. You want to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, as it came to our attention, I mean, we're, we do the field allocation process for rectangular fields as well as the uh, baseball fields. And it just kind of came to our attention that, you know, some groups could come in during field allocation and reserve all the tennis courts before any anybody in the community had an opportunity to use them on any night. Uh, and if if we if we if we don't change this, we could have any large number of groups out there with large tennis organizations that take all of our courts uh, and they could be from outside of our community and no one in our community could use them. Um, so we looked and said, you know, we do want to serve Farragut first, especially during field allocation process. And, and by Farragut, we meant even schools located inside of the town of Farragut, not just Farragut High Middle. Um, and so we thought that would be a fair compromise to serve our community, to allow the schools the use from 4 p.m. after school till 6 or 6.30, uh, and then remove the remaining hours from the field allocation process, protecting our courts and our park for the citizens. Okay, good presentation there, Drew. So. Do you want me to go on to the next part so they all sort of go yeah. together? Yeah. Okay. Um, rental regulations. Currently, the courts um, must be reserved at least 12 hours in advance in order to, to be on the schedule and have the lights. Um, courts are always available for drop-in use at no charge if there's not a reservation, very li much like our uh, shelters. There are QR codes at the entrances of the courts. They can scan it and see, anyone can scan it and see if there's a reservation or not. Um, the proposed change is that the courts, we would back that up a little bit and allow the rental to go up to 3.30 p.m. the day of the rental, and that would give staff time to go ahead and put that on the schedule for the <coughs> Musco lights that night. Um, this allows the community a little more flexibility in deciding, you know, that day if they want to have a rental or not, and the computerized light schedule, uh, we would manually enter into each field and court in our rec desk reservation system, which is what we do now. So any questions about that? So are lights um, scheduled uh, for coming on and going off at McPhee Park, or can they be done at the community center? How does that work? We can do it on our phones. Oh, okay. uh, we can do it. It's a computerized. So okay. we have um, two full-time staff people who take care of that when they come into work. 
um, and come back to meet the part-time people. Uh, that is one of their duties at 3.30-ish, is to look at the schedule for that night, see who, where the registrations are, um, and then go from there and make sure the lights are all set for those hours. Okay. The um, hours are current for current hours for tennis and pickleball in the basketball court are 8:30 a.m. to 8:30 p.m. with reservations. We say they close down at 9 p.m. Um, if rented. So this allows the last game from 8.30 to sort of finish up and get off the courts. The 8.30 a.m. start time is for staff to do the necessary maintenance in the morning, like blow off leaves or whatever else we need to do after they arrive in the morning. Um, that's public works during the week and, and parks and recreation on the weekends. The majority of the time the courts are opened earlier, if there's no maintenance or very little, then many times that they're open between 7.30 and 8. And if maintenance is not required, then it can just start. The rental, the proposed change from the Parks and Athletics Council is the rental hours be from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. with a 9.45 lights out. So that gives that last rental a 50-minute time period to get off the, the courts. All right, and then the last one um, is about the fees. So currently, the approved fees are $10 per hour, or per one-and-a-half-hour block for tennis and $5 per one-and-a-half-hour block for pickleball with a limit of two times per week per person. Basketball has been uh, drop-in use only to, due to the lack of lights. Uh, again, if the courts are not rented, they are free to be used by anyone dropping in. The proposed change from the committee is a fee of $10 per hour for tennis, $5 per hour for pickleball, and $10 per hour for basketball court with a rental limit of four times a week. So it would go from uh, um, an hour and a half block to an hour block, which is much easier for us to schedule on the hour, half hour, and if we're going to extend the time. Um, and the court lights would not come on unless there was a reservation. So they're just not going to be on every night just because there's cost to it, there's staff cost to it, and um, there's also, you know, lighting that's not necessary. So, Can we pay the bill $10 an hour? The lighting bill? Yeah. The lights, those lights are LED and, you know, the, that... Whether we pay any bill is a whole other question if you do the soft costs. So that's in line with what's going on in the city of Knoxville. They have an hour and a half blocks and they have a, a $5 fee no matter when you play. So if, if you go into the tennis centers. So. Okay. Um, I think one of the, I see an issue from residents that say people get started before the start time. Uh, are the courts locked? They are. They are locked, and they, they get unlocked in, in during the week by public works, and again, that's usually between 7.30 and 8. If there needs to be maintenance done, they do that during the week. We do it on the weekends. Same time period where ours is probably more cl closer to 8 because we have a lot of restrooms and one person to open. Um, so they may get started at 8 o'clock. Okay. That was a request by the residents that are living there close by? Yeah, they get they get locked and unlocked. I'm a little uncomfortable with the 9:30 time frame. I understand that you're trying to go into hour blocks, but I'm 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 getting. I, I'd like to hear some feedback from our, our the residents. And I understand what the the goal is there because it's hour chunks. Mm -hmm. But um, I it's interesting. I was looking for you had mentioned a couple of weeks ago a resolution we have for Anchor Park, and um, that it be a no light um, park and in that resolution it says it cuts off play at 9 p.m. Um, I'm thinking we should probably strive to be consistent with that perhaps I don't know 
don't just know. just for reference, yeah, we do get complaints from the uh, one neighborhood specifically about the lights. But for reference, we do have we shut play off at 10 p.m. at all the lighted part at Mayor Bob and McPhee, the fee, other fields at McPhee. Um, that said. We did an analysis, and and um, in the last year, we only we had less than 10% of the total rentals that were after 9 p.m. Some of them were 9:30, and some were 9:45. It's not real often that we get uh, after 9 p.m. rental. Okay. So, and and those lights would go off. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll also add while you're reading her note, Vice Mayor, that I also think it would make sense to adjust seasonally. Um, just speaking, you know, personally, right now, 9 o'clock doesn't seem too late because the sun's out. Yeah. When the time change happens, when it's cooler outside and it starts getting dark at 6, 6.30, 9 is nine's a lot later at my house than yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's three hours of darkness. Yeah. And so I do think it makes sense to adjust that um, seasonally as we move on but right now the thought was nine o'clock you know we still have light some light not enough to place something out yeah. there but yeah. people generally stay up a little later in the summer but then as we move into the fall and winter to back those hours down for lights i, I think that's a, a sounds like a, a fair compromise that we need to really consider that I, I i appreciate what you're saying so you're talking okay so what would that look like When's the time change? Yeah, we do at the time change. It's only happening one more time anyway. Hmm? Doesn't it go away? Isn't it? Is it our time yeah. change going away? Well, well, like this more, next year's it. To me, it's more a, a winter season kind Agreed. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could take that offline and look. I mean, if and we're. That's a, yeah, I don't think that's a. We can. I'm not sure that we made that decision tonight. Did we have um, public input for this? Yes, we have two speakers. Would you want to hear from them? Uh, yes. Our first speaker is Gordon Cassidy. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Ron Pinchock wants to go first. Well, I guess. <laughs> Good evening. Brian Pinchock, 12618 Red Canyon Road, Farragut, Tennessee. I'm here um, supporting our Farragut High School tennis coach, Gordon Cassidy. Um, What's in question here is um, the rental regulation paragraph. Uh, the section that says uh, proposed change courts would be available to reserve during the field court allocation process in January and June by schools located in the town of Farragut only and no later than 6.30 p.m. each day. The concern is that uh, the boys and girls tennis teams each play nine sets there's nine or six singles and three doubles for the boys and same for the girls. That's 18 sets. And a set can last easily 45 minutes, maybe longer. They can't play a match in two hours, two and a half hours. Now, what they do is the tennis season lasts from March, April, and May. March and April are practice months. So 4 to 6.30 is no problem. The kids get off school, they go right out there, they practice for two hours, and it works fine. In May is when they play their matches, and they've got to play probably five home matches. This past year they played district and won by playing Bearden at uh, McPhee Park. So they ended up playing six matches. Um, again, to play 18 sets, they can't do it in two and a half hours. They can do it in probably four, four and a half hours. So four to eight o'clock would work. Now all we're asking is that the Farragut High School teams be able to play in May six, maybe seven times, six or seven days to get these matches in for the whole year. So we're not talking about you know every month or you know whatever. Um, this, this, this is narrowing it down to just their matches. So if we, if you all approve this, they won't be able to play their matches at Fair. I'm sorry, at McPhee Park, and that's our concern. Um, 
Ron, can I ask you? Ron, can I ask you a question? Sure. So we have another high school in Farragut, um, Concord Christian. Right. That I've heard from them multiple times about the tennis courts, and we're we're kind of going down a slippery slope that I was afraid we were going to go down, which is basically we are using town of Farragut assets for schools that are ran by the county. And so, um, but with that being said, we're here and we've done it. Um, and so uh, now we have to live with it. So what would your proposal be to Concord Christian um, if they have to do the same, play the same number of sets? If they play 18 sets, do we give the courts just six or seven times a day or six, six or seven days in May to Farragut High School and then do we give another six or seven days to Concord Christian and then what happens to St. John Newman which also is a very important school here in Farragut and they want to use the courts and then we've got uh, Knoxville Christian School also so how are we going to manage all this? Good question. I, I don't know what uh, Concord Christian's uh, plans are for, for matches. I don't know if they play 18. I don't know how, if they have a girls and a boys team. I don't know if they're going to play six singles and, and three doubles. I'm just wondering why they're not here tonight. I don't, I don't know. What, well, um, as soon as I'm ready for you to speak. Thank you. Um, so why is Concord not here tonight to speak to this? I don't know. Okay. I don't know if they were not aware of... They don't participate in the parks committee, no. maybe? or. So they do, and I believe they were actually in the field allocation process, yeah. and they're the only ones using them right now. Yeah, the, the Farragut School played, I'm mean, sorry, um, reserved the courts for the spring, March, April, and May. Chris, uh, Concord Christian, I don't think they used the courts in the spring, did they? Well, they were not invited to the party. What? <laughs> they... But they did go through the process for fall. Yeah, but they, they were not made aware. And I think that's where we're, we're, we're going to have to try to be, in my opinion, I just think we have to be equitable. Um, whether it's a public school or private school, it doesn't matter. And so um, I'm not for or against this right now. I just am uncomfortable when I hear the high school wants to use the courts, and I appreciate that. The high school also had courts back in the 80s, and the high school chose to put a parking lot there. So I'm trying to figure out now kind of how do we fairly allocate assets that are owned by the town for school years use in a way that's fair to all schools. And yeah. just to yeah. add a little yeah. bit, so I don't know if it was lost in the vernacular, but this is for all schools in Farragut, not right. Farragut schools. So it is right. equitable for But Ron's all talking about reserving right. seven days in May for Farragut High School. And so then what are we going to do for Concord Christian High School? Well, we need to understand. <laughs> for I May. Think, I think we need to understand the, the whole demand of, of, of the other schools as well. That I think that needs to all be yes. um, digested before. I, I'm, I'm I'm not comfortable making a decision on that until we understand what the demands of the other schools are. Speaking for Parks and Rec, what we said is what are we palatable with to have our courts not available for the community in general? And the consensus was six. I wanted six. We landed on 6.30 p.m. Yeah. And anything after that is all community-based. Then we backed into, well, who could use it then from 4 to 6.30? Farragut, well, you got CCS, you got ES, or St. John Newman. Mm -hmm. So you got three other schools. So we said we'd change the language to any school inside of Farragut. That's how we kind of got there. Yeah. We started yeah. with what needs to be, in our opinion, available to the residents. And we said 6.30 to close. And then we backed up to who could then go into field allocation and get it. And we preferred schools over uh, private clubs. Mm -hmm. I That's agree. how we got there. I, hey. I, just briefly, I think what we, we don't have all the information before us. I think that's, I guess we have Farragut <coughs> and Farragut Middle School, their, their needs, but we don't know what the rest of the school's needs are. So um, can, can for, we um, for, get, that, get that information from those schools, I what would, their yeah. needs are? Um, have this go back to you all to have a realistic discussion about uh, what are the goals of them? Do do are they meant there just for practice? Do we are we going to have uh, matches there? If we're planning on having allowing them to have matches there, clearly the two and a half hours isn't going to work. I I don't feel comfortable making that decision. Uh, that 
obviously needs to be the Parks and Rec uh, Committee really needs to wrestle with with that. And because I I agree with you, this these are these were built for the community. Um, certainly, our <coughs> high schools and and our <coughs> private schools are part of our community. Um, so, how do you find that strike that balance? Yeah, I'd like to point out that most of the students are from the community. Yeah. High school and Concord Christian, whatever. So they are residents. And two, the schools are paying for these courts. I mean, they're not getting them free. And, uh, you know, that's, that's revenue coming into us because there are a lot of people that play tennis or pickleball that don't pay anything. They just show up. But these courts are being reserved and paid for. Um, the middle school, uh, they need more than six or eight courts. And so I don't think there's any demand right now for the middle school to use these. There's quite a few kids playing middle school tennis, probably 60 or 80 right now. Wow. But they won't be using these because there's just not enough courts. Now, once the two additional courts are built, we have four right now. There's two on the, in the planning stage. And once we get those other two courts, there's a good chance that they can probably play in two and a half hours and play from 4 to 6.30. But right now, with only four courts... They can't get these matches in in two and a half. Now, they played this past year. The kids were ecstatic. They, they just love the opportunity to be able to play here in town rather than going down to Tyson Park or to Carnes or to Oak Ridge, wherever they've had to play in the past. It was just ridiculous. These kids had to travel that far to play. This is a great opportunity for them to play right here in our town. So um, I was hoping that we would either drop the 6.30 p.m. time for the time being if you look here, it says after Farragut only and no later than 6.30 p.m., either drop it or change it to 8 o'clock is what we'd like to propose. But I would like the <coughs> coach to talk as well, unless you have some other questions for me. Yeah, the six or eight matches, help me understand what that is. What now? The six or eight times you, you're you asking to have Farragut there. Is that district games, region? No, they're, they're, they're regular games. They're, they play but ten why matches. Why only six or eight? Those are the home games. They play... 10 games or 10 matches, 10 schools. Some are on the road, some are at home. So last year they played, actually, what did they play, four or five? Okay, three games at home, and then they played the district game at home. So they played a total of four. It varies from, from year to year, how many home games, how many away games. So all we're looking for right now is if they split the 10 games, five home, five on the road, then we're looking at five days that we want to play to 8.30, or 8 o'clock, I'm sorry. 6.30, change to 6.30 today. Five days, the whole year. Those days be weekend days? No. Have to be, they're school days. This is, they're going to have to play uh, you know, during the week. They, they play right after school, as soon as they can get there. And the other thing is, it takes them a while to get there. Just getting out of the parking lot at Farragut High School takes 20, 30 minutes sometimes. So uh, that eats into this time, too. So. Um, <laughs> It does. It's crazy. I know. I'll say, look, I'm not opposed necessarily to the schools. I mean, I love the schools. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, I just want to make sure that we're fair. And I'm the one that got the call from Concord Christian saying, hey, this allocation's happening, and we had no idea. And we called the town, and we couldn't be a part of it because the allocation happened. We're not so, allocating. Right? I, I know, but I'm, I'm, I think I, the point is is that if we're going to communicate for Farragut High School, which is obviously very important, I married a Farragut grad. She's phenomenal. So nothing wrong with Farragut High School. But we have other schools in our community that are just as important. Mm -hmm. And so my, I, I would like to see us go back and figure out, to your point, Vice Mayor, what is the demand um, for Concord Christian High School's matches? Do they have the 10-match the program like you all do? I, I don't know. <coughs> but we're going to have to, if we're going to make this for the schools, then we need to be proactive and invite the schools, all of them, to participate and not just one. And we need a good understanding of what that is yes. before we vote on yeah. this change. Because there's, I know St. John Newman's got a middle school team. Well, um, so I mean, what's been proposed proposed yeah. is not a number of days, but just that they can, the yeah. schools can use the courts from yeah. four to six thirty. Okay. And you want to go from six thirty to eight is what you're only for the matches. Yeah, and I don't, you know, that's going to vary. So the other time for practice, it it will be from four to six thirty. 
but for matches, it needs to be four to eight. We're not arguing with you. Okay. Yeah. We're yeah. just, we need more, the rest of that information. How many do, do the other schools need? It's, we need to understand when we're making this decision. I, I, I don't feel comfortable until we have, uh, we've had all of the schools give us their input. This does impact the community. And what's the proposed finish well, date? Well, from my point of view, course. I'd like to say, please, uh, I don't think it's any secret. Everybody here knows that my contention with all this is the lighting in the first place. I don't think any of the lighting's legal. It's uh, not in compliance with the with the code. We've got all that to to deal with, and I will deal with that in my way uh, sooner or later. But I'm not comfortable voting um, anything that would extend play past dark. Uh, B because I don't like, I don't think the lights are there legally. That's my opinion. I'm not sure that any of the matches were played under lights. Can we have the coach come up? Yes, please. Well, one one match I think the lights were on, uh, but it was we it was over with at 7:30. Now I can tell you Concord. Your name. Oh, I'm Gordon Cassidy, the Farragut coach. Uh, Concord, they do want to play. They want two nights. John C. Newman is middle school. They'll have their uh, their uh, practicing at uh, Cedar Bluff Racquet Club now, and their matches won't affect next spring. It's it's in the fall. The only high school teams will be Concord Christian and Farragut. Uh, CAK has their own courts. So that narrows it down. That, well, yeah, that, that narrows, anyway, uh, that narrows mm -hmm. the people, the, the schools that would be wanting the courts. Well, I'd like, I appreciate your input. I'd, I'd like to hear from the schools themselves, the school representatives. Okay. I think they should be here to speak. Okay. Or I, we figured out something. I don't know if they give you any emails to do. I was over uh, there today, yeah. and I okay. saw Jim over there on the courts, and I said, are you coming to the meeting? He said, no, we're practicing today. Well. Nice. Those courts are hard to get a hold of. It doesn't surprise me <laughs> that they're out there practicing, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anything else? I, any questions mm -hmm. I can answer mm -hmm. for you? Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. I would like yeah. to clear up one thing. Um, Concord Christian School did have the packet. They did have the information. They had some communication issues like we all do from time to time, but they are part of the field allocation process, and they just didn't really look at it in time. So they remedied this, the last field allocation, and they did put in for um, the things for fall. So. Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know where you guys are. Maybe we could hear from you. <laughs> well, my my concern will be when will the next two courts be finished? That's, um, you know, that right there will change things drastically. So for sure we've got one more season the way it is. So possibly the next season will be with two more courts. Is that the plan? CIP-wise, that's the plan, right? Well, we'll be bringing you a, a design for that soon on what that would look like so the board can make some decisions. And if the board wants to move forward with it, then probably by this time next year, I would imagine we'd be pretty close to having courts yeah. available. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Scott's concern and Louise's concern are, are really something that uh, I think we need to uh, consider because – uh, if the other schools want to weigh in, then we need to know what everybody's program plans are. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, to make a decision and then come to find out there was other plans that, that didn't get vetted here, and I think we probably ought to look at all of it. And as far as the light situation, that, that's not really what we're uh, concerned with right now. That's for another day. So, um, so I think what I'm hearing is that you want us to talk to the schools to come to the next uh, Parks and Athletics Council meeting to talk about what their needs would be and then bring that part back. Can we talk about the regulation? Can, can I add on yes. to that? Sure. I don't think anything will change. 
no matter what's brought back to Parks and Rec. We started with a different mindset than what we're talking about, and that mindset was what needs to be available for the community. If the three schools that I love all three of them come and they want 79 matches, I don't speak for everybody on the committee, but it doesn't matter because we started with the mindset of what do we think for this residential park should be available to the residents. We've already tagged Mayor Bob Leonard as a very different regional attraction park. The majority of that is all um, field allocation. When it comes to the tennis courts at McPhee, we said, I said six, period. We ended up on 630. And that that doesn't matter for for the committee it did not matter how what the demand was from schools so we're welcome to go out and solicit feedback i just don't think it's going to have any difference because we're not going to i don't think the committee would go say okay we'll back it up to eight because we have a lot of schools because the decision was made based on keeping it for the residents if that offers any other color i'm i understand well, the resident use is key, and, and uh, I don't know, I've not seen statistics of use. Uh, so um, our rental hour, it's hard to know because there's a lot of drop-in, but our rental hours have increased dramatically. Um, not so much in tennis, pickleball. It's about, for taking out the school equation, it's about six to one pickleball to tennis re register or, um, reservations so, so that's a change over on the court right yeah we put we put all the nets out now because the the demand is so high all f eight pickleball nets are out and they can be moved front <laughs> to the middle the pickleball players are happy to move them back and forth the tennis uh, players have moved them out of the way. It's worked just wonderfully. Um, so the staff doesn't have to do it, and we really actually can't staff that very well. So that's that's worked really well. But it is overwhelmingly in favor of pickleball over tennis in in community use. You know, okay. I'm I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a motion to approve the recommend recommended changes for McPhee Park court rental regulations um, hours and fees um, as they are stated here I'm going to encourage the uh, high school middle school the schools to engage with the committee to discuss um, extending that opportunity for when they want to have matches because it sounds like you guys had a long discussion about this and you're pretty set but possibly this is a negotiation really between the schools and the parks and athletic committee because that's where it was going to go back to in my opinion anyway so um, that's where this discussion needs to be in the meantime um, if if you you're comfortable that this is what the parks and athletic committee wanted um, I'm comfortable making that motion and if it and it may be amended yes okay well, they could come back with an amended yeah. yes okay somebody go I'll second that is that a motion? I said a motion, yes. Okay. Um, since we do have a motion on the floor, and I think we've discussed this pretty well, so I'll go ahead and ask for a vote. Uh, all in favor? Uh, please say yes. 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 No's? No. Okay. All right, a, so tomorrow we will put the basketball uh, light schedule up, um, so that'll be available in reservations. Uh, we'll slowly transition for the tennis and pickleball because we already have res reservations a little bit in ahead, ahead, and we'll have to do some manipulation there. But I'd say by mid-September we should be able to have that all uh, worked out. So thank you very much. Okay. Let the record show that the request for change has been approved four to one. Okay, next will be